Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I have something from India. No, it's not Paul John. No, it's not Amrut. It is Rampur. Ooh, Rampur Indian single malt whiskey, non chilled filtered, sherry. Pedro Jimenez PX finish. Ooh, it's a limited 48 cask release. Very interesting. And I like how they have the product of India down here at the bottom, 45%. So if you're looking at the whiskey base number, it's whiskey base 184626. Now, the first thing I think of when I see a, um, a bag like this, um, I don't know, is it Crown Royal? <laughs> So, do do do, boom. So, we have that. Now, this bag stinks of chemicals, and I'm just going to pour this into the glass and then tell you a little bit about Rampour because most people don't know about Rampour. At least I didn't before I started researching a little bit. A very interesting company. All right, by the way, I have batch number 2259, and I have the manufacturing date is January um, 2019. All right, let's start off with the 48 casks before we actually go over here to our nice little um, history lesson here. So, um, 48. So this is a, these are sherry butts. A sherry butt is 500 liters. So we take 48 and we times it by 500 and we get this wonderful number called 24,000. So 24,000 liters worth of spirit. Now, this is not bottled at cast strength. And so if we take a 0 0.7, um, first of all, then we have actually, um, oops, so let's do this here, 24,000 uh, divided by 0 0.7. So you have actually 34,000 bottles. As I said, it was not in cast strength. So I'm gonna times this actually by about 1.3 again. And I'm going to get um, 1.3, very good. I'm gonna get about 45,000 bottles was this one batch. Hmm, now, what sounds better, 48 casks? Or does 45,000 bottles sound better? Hmm. All right, so now I take a look at the mother, the parent company, I'm sorry, of um, Rampour, and it is Radico Caetan. I'm sorry if I mispronounce that. And their former name was Rampour Distillery and Chemicals Company Limited. Chemicals Company, oh, oh no. And Radico uh, brands are sold in more than 85 countries. And they're basically known for industrial alcohol, Indian-made foreign liquor, mm -hmm, and um, fertilizer. <laughs> All right, why not? So I go down to Rampore Distillery um, on my site that I'm looking at on Wikipedia. And they're actually located in Rampore. Um, they're on the, on the foot of the Himalayas. And um, this is actually one of their largest and oldest distilleries. They have a production capacity of 125 million liters of alcohol per year. That's a lot. So what do they do? They basically make 75 million liters of molasses ENA. You do not know ENA? Well, neither did I. ENA is extra neutral alcohol or ethyl alcohol. So you can't call it grain neutral alcohol because they did not use grain. They used molasses, which is sugar. And so this um, whiskey that is made based on alcohol, which is allowed in um, India, I think it's actually called something like county. Um, what was it called here? County liquor. <laughs> um, yeah, so they have... 75 million uh, molasses ENAs, they have 30 million grain neutral spirits, so they do have some grains, and they produce about 460,000 liters of malt whiskey annually. So um, they do have pot stills, and the interesting thing that I found out was uh, that they actually have um, three pot stills. Um, two of those are basically wash stills at 8,500 liters, and they have one spirit still of 12,000. So you have two um, wash stills. You put the, um, the, the wines together, the low wines, and you put it into then uh, the spirit still, and you have your alcohol. So they're 
beautiful or nice looking pot stills. I can't call them beautiful. Um, they use North Indian six row barley. They have a fermentation time of between 52 and 60 hours. And um, they actually have uh, temperature differences up there in the winter, maybe right below freezing, and in the summer, 40 plus degrees Celsius, which is above 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's radical um, temperature changes there, all right? So um, I'm going to compare this as usual to something. <laughs> You're going to laugh. I laughed as well. I looked on my shelves and I tried to find something with a Pedro Jimenez um, finish. Um, and I went to Irish. So why not? So I have an Irish whiskey here. This is Brabazon number three. So I'm just going to um, take this out of the big box here and pour me a little bit of this. This is also bottled at 46% and has an age statement of 14 years. So we're going to pay over here for the Rampour. Um, at least in Germany, I'm paying 52 euros for this. For this, I'm paying about 30 euros more. All right. So on the nose. This is some weird stuff. I'm just going to use the word weird. Why weird? Because it's, for me, difficult to identify. Is it a mango? Is it a mayacuya? Is it a strawberry? I'm not sure. It's a red berry. It's a red apple. But there's something weird going on here, a mango type of moment. Now, um, the first thing I thought was, oh, did they put molasses in it? No, they're using 100% um, Indian barley, malted barley. According to their web page, I'm all, not always someone who believes the web pages, the websites as much as other people do, but they actually have 75 years of experience distilling. Well, at that distillery, they only have about 35 of actually making single malt. But shh. And they do the malting, they do the mashing, they do the fermenting, they do the distillation, they do the maturation, and they actually do the bottling as well. So they're doing many different things. They have vodkas and rums and gins and whiskeys and so on. So not a lot of it has made it out of India yet, but they're working on building up that distribution network for the future. So now, as I mentioned here, this is very, very interesting, fruity. I don't know. Fruity red it's almost as if it was a flavored whiskey, which it's not, but that's what it seems to be. So let's try this. 45% non-chilled filtered, by the way. 45%. Interesting. So, cheers. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it really goes downhill for me. Over here in Germany, um, 52 euros at the whiskey exchange last year in 2020. They actually had this on sale for 68 pounds. So I'm getting a bargain at least over here in Germany. Um, now, I, I'm not sure if I can really say it goes downhill, but it changes. It changes into like a strawberry punch moment. And I'm not really sure I want strawberry punch in my whiskey. Now, um, PX, Pedro Jimenez, or PX, I'm sorry, PX casks, Pedro, Pedro Jimenez. Um, they should be a lot of raisins. I don't get any raisins. If I go over here as a comparison and come back in a second, one second, I want to rinse my mouth out. I do get a tiny little bit of sulfur on it, but not much. I do get more of a raisin moment, more of a yellow raisin. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is more of a well-known moment. Oh, a little bit more sulfur than I expected. Um, this is something I am acquainted with, which I'm familiar with. I've tasted two plus thousand different whiskeys so far in my YouTube um, career. This is something that I, it's syrupy. It's the Pedro Jimenez, the PX that you know, you love, you hate. Depends on who you are. Over here, this is an oddball. So if you like Floki from um, New Zealand, not New Zealand, from Iceland. If you like um, the elephant dung um, matured whiskey from Africa. If you like these weird things going up on Scandinavia. 
And if you want to try something way out there, this is what you're looking at. Now, maybe the Amruts, maybe the Paul Johns at the beginning were considered whiskeys that were way out there, oddballs. Um, Star Ward is doing some left field things, even a whiskey named well, Left Field down in Australia, Melbourne. Um, it's not bad. It's just way different from what you expect. And so I'm not really sure. Now, over here in Germany, for example, basically no one has a pickup truck. There are a few wannabe rednecks, I would say one in maybe about a, a million, not a million, maybe one in about 100,000 people in Germany. So there's not that many, all right? So um, well, in my city, I actually have like three pickups where it's like, okay, one in 10,000 people have a pickup truck. I think in Texas, where my dad lives, it's like um, uh, four out of 10, <laughs> two out of five people own a pickup. And so it's a whole different story. And now if you are over here in Germany, I'd get my wife into a pickup for the first time. She would be like, this is weird. Where, where, where's the, where's the trunk? Where's this? Where's that? Why that? And so on. It would be just totally different experience from what she's used to. And that, this could be the pickups of the whiskey world. Who knows? Or a Jeep or whatever else you want to talk about here. Wow, that really does leave a different aroma and tastes and flavor in my mouth than I'm used to with a whiskey. Um, there's a little bit of a spice at the end, but there's this, for me, this big mayakuya, a mango, a strawberry moment going on there, which I really am not that fond of. I'm going to give this whiskey a C. I'm going to give this whiskey a C minus minus for its value for money. It sold out in Germany. Um, apparently, there were not that many um, bottles that made it here. I'm <laughs> kind of wondering, where are the 40,000 bottles? Did they make it to the States? Did they make it only into India? India is a big country. Don't forget, over a billion people. They drink a lot of stuff. There was one fact that was talking about the beginning of the story of this company. If you go, I went over here to Wikipedia and it was very, very interesting. When they started getting into whiskey, it says here, let's talk about. Um, While planning to launch a new brand in 1996, Kaitan and his son um, Ab Hushka Hak who had joined the company recently found that more of scotch was consumed in India than was bottled in Scotland. And there was no scotch blended whiskey brand available in the in the lower price range at the time. And the uh, Kaitans intended to launch a brand to target that segment, but had low finances, which was compounded by the entry into the Indian liquor um, industry. And the first uh, Radico Kaitan uh, brand was the 8 p.m. whiskey launched in 1999 and of course and currently Radico's flagship brand all right so um so they did create a whiskey just for India but I like the phrase here they found that more scotch was consumed in India than was bottled in Scotland hmm what does that mean now a tiny little um moment here of uh, uh digressing Single malt scotch has to be bottled in Scotland. Scotch, blended scotch, does not. And so what they can do is they can put these in these big food containers, these big tanker trucks or tanker containers, ship it over to India and let it be bottled there at a very, very competitive price point. So since it's not bottled in India, sorry, it's not bottled in Scotland, but rather India, and you can water it down, you can mix it with some... Um, some grain neutral spirits, or what they also do is you can actually mix it here with our wonderful um, thing called, what was it called here? Our molasses ENA. So you take maybe 5% of the real malt, you take 95% of this molasses ENA, and you have a wonderful, wonderful <coughs> scotch blended whiskey. So welcome to India, people. All right, so that stuff cannot be sold in Europe as, as, uh, as scotch, nor can it be sold in America, but in the country of India itself, yes, unfortunately. All right, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking. What is your favorite Indian whiskey? Is it something from Paul John? Is it something from Amrut? Or is it something from Rapur? And do you know of any other brands that have made it overseas yet, making single malt, Scot single malt whiskey? I'd be interested in naming, um, having those brands also named. Thank you very much. See you soon. Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.